Welcome to Menopause Wise, your go-to podcast for all things evidence-based in the menopause world. I am Dr. Sukhpreet Patel, an MD OBGYN, a menopause health advocate, a postmenopausal woman and the founder of Menopause Wise. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have you join us on this journey. Whether you are a healthcare provider looking to stay on top of the latest evidence-based practices, a woman navigating your own perimenopause or menopause journey, or a partner or family member eager to support a loved one, this series is designed with you in mind. Our mission through Menopause Wise is to close the menopause knowledge gap by bringing you the latest research, expert insights, and practical advice, empowering you to make informed decisions about menopause and perimenopause. Hot flashes and night sweats, collectively known as vasomotor symptoms or VMS, are among the most common and disruptive symptoms of menopause, affecting up to 80% of women. And get this, they can stick around for an average of 7 to 9 years. And one third of women even deal with them for more than a decade. Isn't that insane? Menopausal hormone therapy or MHT is often the go-to treatment for vasomotor symptoms. But let's face it, it's not for everyone. So through our many-part series on non-hormonal alternatives for vasomotor symptoms, we'll explore various non-hormonal approaches to help alleviate this common menopause symptom. We'll start with lifestyle factors, then dive into over-the-counter supplements, explore non-hormonal prescription drugs, and finally, we'll wrap up with psychophysical techniques and acupuncture. So let's kick things off with lifestyle changes. You've probably heard of or recommended cooling techniques, avoiding triggers like spicy foods or alcohol, and making dietary changes for vasomotor symptoms. These all sound like practical advice, right? But let's see what research has to say about using these as a means to treat or control hot flashes. One of the common triggers for hot flashes is a rise in core body temperature. So it makes sense that controlling your core temperature through cooling techniques could help prevent hot flashes, right? That's why you'll often hear advice to dress in layers, use fans, or keep your room cool as ways to manage these symptoms. But here's the thing. While these cooling techniques sound promising, research tells a slightly different story. For example, one study looked at the effectiveness of a nighttime thermal comfort intervention over four weeks involving 39 women. The results? Some women did report sleeping better, but there was no significant change in the number or duration of their hot flashes. So flipping your pillow to the cool side might feel good, but don't expect it to completely stop those hot flashes in their tracks. That said, if dressing in layers or cranking up the air conditioning helps you feel more comfortable and better manage your hot flashes, by all means, go for it. The key is finding what works best for you, even if the science isn't fully backing it up. Avoiding triggers like caffeine, alcohol or spicy foods is another common recommendation. In fact, a large cross-sectional study of over 4,500 Chinese women found a positive association between alcohol intake and hot flashes. But this finding hasn't been consistently replicated in other populations. The truth is, no clinical trials have definitively shown that avoiding these triggers actually reduces hot flashes. Nevertheless, if you notice that certain foods or drinks seem to make your symptoms worse, it's still a good idea to avoid them. Once again, it's all about finding what works best for you. But maintaining a log is crucial if you're serious about identifying your hot flash triggers. It's easy to go through our days relying on guesses or vague recollections. But without concrete data, it's nearly impossible to pinpoint what's really causing those symptoms. By keeping track of your daily activities, diet, environment, and the timing of your hot flashes, you'll start to see patterns emerge, if at all. It's amazing how much clearer things become when you have actual data to look at. This helps you make more informed decisions about how to manage and reduce your symptoms effectively. What about exercise and yoga for hot flashes? We have mixed results there too. Some observational studies suggest that women who exercise regularly report fewer hot flashes, but other studies show no such connection. So what's the conclusion? 
Yoga and exercise might offer small improvements, but they aren't effective as standalone treatments for hot flashes. But don't write off exercise and yoga just yet. It's important to bear in mind that standardizing exercise and yoga as interventions is challenging, which in turn makes it difficult to standardize the results across studies for hot flashes. Besides, these practices bring a whole host of other benefits that can be incredibly valuable during menopause. For one, they are great for improving bone density, which helps prevent osteoporosis. They also support cardiovascular health, boost mental health and mood, and enhance flexibility and balance, which can be crucial for preventing falls. So even if they don't do much for your heart flashes, exercising and practicing yoga are still worth it for everything else they do for your overall well-being. Now let's talk about dietary modification. The research on how diet affects vasomotor symptoms is somewhat limited, but there are some intriguing findings. For instance, one study involving postmenopausal women with more than two heart flashes per day found that those women who were randomized to a low-fat, plant-based diet with a half cup of cooked soybeans daily experienced a much larger reduction in vasomotor symptoms over just 12 weeks. Isn't that something? Surveys have also shown that increased vegetable and fruit consumption is associated with fewer menopause symptoms. In addition to that, women following a vegan diet reported fewer bothersome vasomotor symptoms than those who consumed meat. Similarly, another study found that high-fat and high-sugar diets were linked to an increased risk of heart flashes. Another study noted that higher soy milk and vegetable consumption was associated with fewer menopause symptoms, while those who consumed poultry and skimmed dairy products reported worse symptoms. While the evidence from clinical trials supporting dietary modification for improving heart flashes isn't strong enough, it's definitely worth adding to your heart flash toolkit if it works for you. Since soy is often used as a source of phyto or plant estrogens, it's frequently included in research as a supplement for managing menopause symptoms. Soy is a bit special in this regard, with more research backing its potential benefits. We'll be diving deeper into the role of soy and other supplements in managing menopause symptoms in another episode, so stay tuned for that. Now coming to the sensitive topic of weight. Studies have shown that women who are obese are more likely to experience frequent and severe heart flashes compared to women of normal weight. And randomized controlled trials have found that weight loss through behavioral interventions can reduce vasomotor symptoms. Notably, the motivation to reduce heart flashes has often driven weight loss efforts for many women. Anything to trade off those heart flashes, right? In addition to that, the impact of adiposity and weight loss on vasomotor symptoms appears to vary based on age and the stage of menopause, with greater effects observed earlier in the transition, such as during perimenopause and early postmenopause. Bottom line, while the evidence is limited, weight loss might help improve vasomotor symptoms. But I completely understand. If you're in menopause and finding it tough to lose weight, you're not alone. We know it's a challenge and we'll be diving into weight management and all the hurdles that come with it in a future series. So hang in there, we've got you covered. So as we wrap up today's episode, let's quickly recap the key takeaways about lifestyle and heart flashes. While the research on cooling techniques like dressing in layers or using fans isn't conclusive in reducing heart flashes, these strategies can still help you manage symptoms more comfortably. The key is finding what works best for you. Avoiding common triggers like caffeine, alcohol or spicy foods may help some women, even though the evidence isn't strong. If you find that certain foods or drinks worsen your symptoms, it's worth avoiding them. In my experience, maintaining a log for your symptoms and triggers can be very useful in identifying them. The evidence for exercise and yoga as standalone treatments for heart flashes is mixed, but don't discount them. Firstly, they do have the potential to reduce vasomotor symptoms along with other strategies. And besides that, these practices offer a wealth of other benefits, from boosting bone density and cardiovascular health to improving mental health, mood, flexibility and balance. So even if they don't significantly reduce hot flashes, they're still highly beneficial for your overall well-being. 
Adopting a low-fat, plant-based diet with foods like soybeans might reduce hot flashes for some women. Soy is unique with regards to its plant estrogen content and deserves an entire episode of its own. Increasing your intake of vegetables and fruits and considering a vegan diet might also help your hot flashes. If dietary changes work for you, it's definitely worth adding them to your toolkit. Weight loss, especially for women who are obese, can be an effective strategy for reducing vasomotor symptoms. The impact seems to be more significant earlier in the menopause transition. While the evidence is limited, the potential benefits make weight loss a strategy definitely worth considering. And finally, remember, the journey to managing menopause symptoms like hot flashes is unique for each woman. What works for one person might not work for another. So it's all about finding the strategies that suit you best. And this brings us to the end of today's episode. Stay tuned for the next episode in our series on non-hormonal options for heart flashes, where we'll explore soy and soy-based supplements and their role in managing heart flashes and night sweats. Until then, take care and be menopause-wise. The information provided in this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. If you are a healthcare provider interested in collaborating with us or have insights to share, we'd love to hear from you. Please email us at info at That's wise with a Z.